Steve, I want to start with you, that Q4 number. Um, much better than expected. How, uh, how does it sum up 2018 and how does it take us into 2019? Pr pretty good number. Um, you had a little bit more on the business investment side, which speaks to uh, some of the policies of the administration. Uh, it was a little at odds with some of the monthly data, but we'll square that out, I suppose, over time. Uh, you got a big boost from government, a big boost, uh, some boost uh, from inventories, a little drag on trade. Pretty good number all around. Nice to see it not weakening as much as expected. Um, I am seeing forecasts for the first quarter come down, at least those that I've seen so far. We'll get more as the day goes by. Uh, we're still looking for below trend growth in the first quarter. We'll see if people decide to, th that they were wrong in the fourth quarter by a little bit, that they'll be a little bit wrong to the upside in the first quarter. That's not the case just yet. But you know what? However you get there, you take a train, you take a plane, as long as you get to the place you need to go. Uh, it was a weakening from the third quarter, but still pretty strong above trend growth. Yeah, and John, there, there's different methodologies in terms of how people are calculating this number and where it stands in terms of the Trump administration's uh, economic growth numbers thus far versus the Obama administration and past administrations. Uh, how, should, how should investors be thinking about that, too? Well, I think investors should be thinking about it the way Steve was describing. Uh, it was a stronger than expected fourth quarter number, although there does seem to be a little bit of an inverse relationship between uh, what came in in the fourth quarter and what we expect from the first quarter of 2019 because of inventory levels. Uh, but uh, the, the political point is that the Trump administration ran for office saying that they were going to, through tax cuts and re, uh, deregulation, lift long-term economic growth and keep it there to the post-World War II average of 3%. And they said that President <coughs> Obama never achieved it. He was the first modern president. We hadn't done it since 2005 with President uh, George W. Bush. Well, uh, the number we got for 2018, which is going to be the peak year for President Trump, uh, because it's headed down from here, was 2.9, the same level President Obama reached. The point is, they have not increased on a durable basis uh, economic growth to that uh, post-World War II level. And if you look at what the uh, CBO and the Federal Reserve are projecting, they see GDP growth declining to 2.3% in 2019. And the long-term growth, according to both the Federal Reserve uh, and the CBO, is below 2%. Brian, Brian. Levitt. Um Obviously, we're arguing about a quarter that, be <laughs> that began five months ago. Right. Okay. And I'm wondering from right now what the trajectory is and what your baseline assumption is, because pretty much some nature of slowdown is assumed. What does it mean for investors? Right. So I actually think it's good news that the economy is moderating. It was going to be very difficult for the U.S. to sustain so above 3 percent growth. You would have had to import a lot of 30-year-olds and make them really, really productive. It's hard to do that at this point in the cycle. So this slowdown in growth is actually good for markets because last year very strong growth but that raised interest rates and brought forward Fed tightening so the way we categorize that is strong growth but bad policy this year is moderating growth as government spending goes down or drags some but better policy. The Fed has backed off as a result of expectations of slower growth. Rates have stabilized around 265, 270. That's a good backdrop for equities. Brian Gardner, what could boost this year's GDP growth uh, higher than currently expected? Is China trade the, the key factor? And were you encouraged by Larry Kudlow's comments uh, earlier on Squawk on the Street? Yeah, I, I, I think a deal with China could be beneficial. Um, I, I think international growth, uh, because I, I think Larry was generally correct in that uh, U.S. growth has been uh, better than a lot of parts uh, of the rest of the developed world. So if we get uh, a little bit more of a tailwind internationally, I, I, I think that helps. I, I thought Larry was a little overly optimistic on the China talks. Um, and I think he tried to gloss over the differences that uh, Ambassador Lighthizer uh, highlighted yesterday in his testimony. I still think there's a big problem uh, with uh, the China talks, and I don't think the administration is as close to a deal uh, as, as Larry suggested. But getting a deal at least on, the, on tariffs and goods is, is certainly a positive in, uh, in 2019 economic terms. Brian Gardner, what does that mean for markets? And I ask that because uh, we've had so many people on who have said that they think that a certain amount of good news or even just some sort of near-term deal or beginnings of a deal is priced in here. 
I, I actually think it's pretty good for the markets. I, I, I think in some respects, the Trump administration has done a lot of good things on regulatory policy, on tax policy. I think at other times on trade, they're their own worst enemy um, and that they shoot themselves in the foot. And to take away uh, the dampening effect of the, the prospects of further trade wars, uh, and the other tariff battles that they're fighting with the EU and other countries. I think if you remove that, I think it's generally a positive for economic growth uh, going forward. Um, certainly, it's a positive for the markets, maybe more so for the financial markets than the economy overall. I would advise investors to watch the dollar because, you know, we've been in this environment now where the dollar's been <clears throat> relatively stable since the beginning part of 2016. We had some leg up last year. What's really key to this environment right now is that Chinese growth begins to stabilize, and we're seeing that a little bit in the new orders numbers that came out in the Purchasing Managers Index. The Chinese policymakers are working very hard to stabilize growth. That should allow the dollar to remain relatively range-bound or even start to weaken a little bit, which will be very good for multinational companies companies, which will be very good for emerging market growth and emerging market capital uh, flow into the emerging market. So to me, that's the big issue. If you get a bad outcome in trade, that's going to disrupt that, right? And the dollar will strengthen from here. There'll be a flight to quality, and we'll be back talking about concerns about recession. If we get some agreement that keeps the dollar relatively stable, then this cycle should go on far uh, longer. How, how are investors positioned at the moment, Brian? Is there a cash levels high or low? Cash levels are higher than we've seen in a while. So um, if you think in December, we saw a significant amount of money come out of equity mutual funds and equity ETFs, something like $53 billion. You saw more money go into money markets at the end of the year than you had seen, I think, since 2009. So investors are, are pretty cautious. And they're also very overweight, the United States. Some of that is just the United States has run up and they haven't rebalanced. And some of that is, well, the United States has done well. It will continue to do well. To me, the big story story is U.S. slowing towards trend, China stabilizing towards trend, and that should help some of the um, lower valued regions of the world, which in part of the emerging markets. Yeah, and, and Steve Leisman, to that point, when you do look at some of these, uh, some of the data we've gotten here in the U.S., you hear these comments from Brian Levitt on, that maybe that the, that we're we're at a bottom in terms of that slowdown in, in Chinese economic growth. How is all of that going to potentially shape the Fed's policy this year? I mean, it looks like we have more and more people coming on talking about the potential for a cut in the second half of the year. But when you look at that data or those comments, it sounds like it could be the opposite. Well, if China were to rebound and rebound strongly, that could have a positive effect on the U.S. You'd want to bring Europe along with that to change that trajectory. Um, I think the Fed is pretty firmly on hold. And I think it would take a lot to get the Fed to go either way here, either uh, to cut or to hike. Um, it may be that you have uh, growth come in above potential. And I want to get back to that and what Brian and others were saying investors should watch. I'd watch potential growth here. John was making an important point about this, which is that's the whole game. Has there or has there not been an upward shift in potential growth? Because if there has, it changes the investment outlook. It changes the game. So how do you watch something you can't see? Watch at least the equipment spending numbers. Watch the in intangible numbers uh, that we get in those reports and see if in businesses are indeed investing. If they are, you've got a prospect for greater productivity growth. If we get that, then you have a prospect for an upward shift in potential. The Fed will watch that and care very deeply about what it estimates the potential of the economy to be. And that's going to be something that guides Fed policy over the next year and, and beyond. And, and John, uh, finally, as we talk about the political implications of what's happening with the economy and who gets credit and the inputs of this, if the Fed is presumably on hold, uh, we get some kind of a, uh, of a China deal. The tax law passed. It's not really clear what else on a fiscal basis is in train uh, from the administration. I mean, are we kind of seeing right here what we're going to get in terms of uh, what the Trump economy is going to, uh, to look like? I think so. And I think that uh, if, in fact, uh, uh, we do get some more business investment and do get a China trade deal, that is good news for the administration, whether that's baked in or not uh, into the markets, I don't know. But the most important point is the one that <clears throat> Brian Levitt made a few minutes ago, which is that what constrains our long term economic growth is the rate of productivity growth, which has been sluggish. And the rate uh, of labor supply and labor supply is dwindling as the baby boomers retire. That's what uh, that's why we revert to trend, as Brian said. 
Uh, and Larry Kudlow said in the clip you put, played a moment ago, we're, we're going to sustain these levels indefinitely. There is simply no evidence right now to uh, back up that claim.